between like uh, changing room and cage. So this is, I think, for me, it's most complicated time trying like to fight with myself. But while why you enter in cage, it's like so different. It's time when I can like open myself, like I can take this energy in the right way. So it's uh, training hard, but fighting it's like uh, think what he was waiting all this time. He did like a great job, so it's time to enjoy. You know, I, we go through a million scenarios, and I'm like, what if this happens? What if this happens? But whenever I get to the arena, okay, now I'm at work. Like now, now I'm here. Now it's time. Like nothing else matters. Like the only thing now that I need to be worried about is like I go in there and I need to find a way to get out. You know, like at the end of the day, I'm still going to get locked in that cage and I'm still going to have to fight this person. So I, that for some reason, once I see the cage, once I'm in there and I feel it, I'm like, I feel good. I feel relaxed. I feel calm and, and I'm just focused and ready to go. I think that she's a very good fighter. I saw a lot of her fights. I'm sure that she's working very hard and she wants the same as me. Uh, to win this title, so I think that uh, I want I will win this fight by knockout or by technical knockout. It's it's my plan. <laughs> I think Jan is tough. You know, she's bigger than I am. She's going to be strong, and I think that she's going to come. And she's going to bring the fight. I just feel like she had her chance. Who who has been able to fight for the title three times in a row? And I, I've been in Invicta, I've done, I paid my dues, I've done the work, and it's just gonna be my night. Like, I, I will not let this belt go home with Yana. This belt is coming home with me to Vegas. From the famed BJ Penn to the current UFC featherweight champion Max Holloway, the reputation of Hawaiian fighters seems to extend beyond a quest for personal success to a desire to highlight the fierce pride of being born in the islands. For Raquel Paoluhi, this pride carries the extra motivation of representing the fighting heritage of her family, particularly her father, David Kawiki Paoluhi, who competed in Hawaii's first generation of MMA fighters. Since birth, fighting was an integral part of her identity. Anyone ask where you're from, you're like, why not? Why? You know, because they automatically think, like, you know, it's like a little bit more of a it's poor place. Um, a lot of fights, a lot of drug use, a lot of violence, I guess, there. You know, so growing up, I've pretty much seen it all. You know, from drugs to fighting to riots to, you know, you, you see everything growing up there. Growing up in Waianae, you play football or baseball, and then when the season's done, you go and you box. You go to Waianae Boxing Gym and you box. So my dad, like, you know, boxed from when he was younger, and then when he got to high school, he wrestled. Um, he did some karate, did, like, even arm wrestling, was like the state champ of arm wrestling. So, you know, like, he, he's always did some kind of martial arts. So I think it was in 96 when um, they had their first ever, like, tournament in you no know, gloves, no rules, like you just, I, th I think the only thing you couldn't do was like poke them in the eye or something like that. So he ended up winning like, it was like one of the first ever in Hawaii, it was called Future Bra. You know, and then I think they had done a couple like that and you know, eventually they started making the Super Bras which were really popular. No, 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 yeah, they had to stop that. Got right in there. And then he shoots low. Nice, soup. Oh, beautiful. Nice. Wow, this kid's impressive. Oh. Great arm bar. There you gotta speak together, bar. that's it. Oh. Beautiful technical fight by Kavika Paanui. I had pretty much been in like martial arts my whole life. Uh, I wasn't very, I wasn't the one my dad expected to excel or like carry it out, you know, like he made us train every day where maybe when we were doing karate we had to do like the training for that and then on the side every day we had to do like five to ten katas. I think that it taught us a lot, like it taught us a lot of discipline, it made us like mentally stronger, like my dad is like a really old school guy, so you know, he really like pushed that mindset on us that we can do anything, we have to strive to be the best, and I think he taught us that through martial arts, which was like the thing that he knew best.
when I was younger. This was when I was like maybe sixth, fifth, sixth grade. All my siblings were wrestling and I didn't because I, I, I think my dad was almost embarrassed to let me wrestle because I was so uncoordinated. And you know, my parents split up. My brother went to live with my dad and the three girls stayed with my mom. And it was almost like uh, when I was 10th grade and I could make the decision for myself, I was like, you know, I want to wrestle because I wasn't living with my dad at the time, but I wanted him to feel proud of me. You know, so it was kind of why I started to wrestle was because of that. I went away and I wrestled for one year in college and I actually did really well. I, I was an All-American that first year that I wrestled. And uh, during the summer I went home and things kind of fell, like some things had fallen through. My dad was saying that, you know, you have to do something, you can't not do anything. So he kind of like put the pressure on me and I was like, yeah, I want to fight. You know, and if you say something, my dad's going to make sure that you carry it through. So, you know, like right away he sat down with me and we made like a 10 year plan. And then we did the first two, year, the first two years, you know. Uh, like broke it down and you know like okay guess I'm doing this you know so I think I trained for maybe two or three months and I had like my first amateur fight after that. But even the best laid plans could be shaky and in a landscape of a sport that was only just starting to recognize the potential marketability of female fighters Raquel's attempts for a consistent path to a championship run were thwarted. Lack of opportunities often leads to a desperate willingness to accept every fight, and Raquel's raw recklessness led to a string of losses early in her career. Six or seven years ago, there weren't as many people as there are now. Like, the sport is exploding, and everyone wants to, to try to be a cage fighter, you know? So at that time, there were only those girls to fight. So when they had given me the fights, like, I, I, I think I'm fearless where I don't really care. I'm like, I oh, know I want to fight. Like fighting is just in me and I want, wanted to fight so bad. I, I took the fights and I don't think I was ever afraid. Like even when they offered me Sarah McMahon, that was probably the first bigger fight that I had. And I, and I was like fighting one of my idols because I came from wrestling, you know, and, and she was an Olympian and I had watched her and I was just like, oh, this is cool. You know, and I, I didn't care. Like I think I went in there and I gave it my best shot and I was like 20 years old fighting an Olympian, but like what more could I have asked for? Who else could say they did that, you know? And I, and I tried and I lost like a, you know, a bunch of fights to, to these high level girls, but would I lose to them now? I don't think so. You know, it, it, it gave me like a gauge in the beginning and, I, and most people probably would have lost and like packed up their bags and be like, okay, let me get a normal desk job. But it really like fired me up and I was like, okay, if this is where I need to be, I need to figure out a way to get there. But Invicta has done an amazing job, like it's given women a, a platform to shine on where you watch these girls, like everyone's skilled. You know, I think that when you make a platform like this, everyone rises to the occasion where they want to be, they know that they're going to be seen and they want to put on their best performances. You know, so I think like the talent is continually growing, everyone is continually getting better and you know, like Invicta is getting, is getting better every time, you know, they take care of everything for us, you know, they, they treat us well. By 2014, Raquel had the reputation and resume of going toe-to-toe -to -toe with some of the toughest in the sport, but with three losses in a row and an upside-down record, she was far from the championship run she promised her father. Yana Kunitskaya grew up in a small town in Russia with one goal for herself, to become a professional sportswoman. She was born into a family of athletes. Her mother was a gymnast and her father a champion skier. At the age of four, Yana Kunitskaya's parents recognized the athletic potential in their daughter and reluctantly enrolled her in the only sports club accessible in the area, a local Taekwondo gym. But they had every intention of finding something better for her later on. Uh, I was um, four years old when I started training martial arts because in place where I was studying, like with kids, it was only uh, one uh, sport to think what we can do, it was martial arts and my parents didn't want that I played but they said that like I'll play a little bit um, but when I grow I find that it's like my thing. I was trying a lot of different sports but uh, it, it was thing what I was really like and maybe when I was 14, 15, there was, my parents was trying to stop the thing and we was fighting about this, it was like don't giving me to go to training. Uh, trying a, a lot of different ways, like giving gifts when I go just to train as a sport and things, but it didn't work. And uh, it was like everyone thinking is like you from f family from sport, it's more easy. No, for me it was very complicated. I was fighting to go to training. <laughs> uh, 
it's like I was trying to do everything to be a sportsman. I was thinking, I was asking my mom, like, what should I eat to be a sportsman? What, like, better, what better to, like, best sportsman eating? I remember she told me, like, name of one of the porridge, and I was trying to eat it a lot because I said I was four years old, and I said it will help me. Uh, so, like, all my life I was planning, I didn't plan to be, like, professional fighters, that is my main job, but I wanted to be around, maybe do something else, study something else, but be like inside sport, maybe like, I didn't want to like stay in office and like spend my full day here, or like any kind of like other job what normally women doing. And I know I wanted to do something what like is fighting. Even in school, it was some teachers asking like, what what you want to do in in your life? And when I told you that about sport, everyone was looking like it's it's not a job. It's like it's not what women can do. Like no, you need like study to be like a counter or like to work in the office, to do something like this or like know how to make manicure for women. I don't I think no, it's it's not for me. <laughs> This attitude reflected a strong social prejudice that pervades the MMA scene in Russia even to this day. It still baffles Kunitskaya that even her fellow Russian training partners and compatriots would shake her hand but then say, a woman shouldn't fight. Societal prejudice was also a physical setback. Kunitskaya faced a serious lack of competition. Though Russia had produced a handful of female fighters, they were frustratingly scattered across borderlines. When it came to her attention that there was a steep rise in popularity and talent of the female MMA fighting scene in America, Kuniskaya became determined to make an international name for herself and book a fight there. In 2009, with no other options available, she made her debut fight in front of thousands in the lauded K-1 World Grand Prix in Poland against a hometown opponent who had four times as much professional experience. In Russia, we don't have a lot of fighters, not like who fighting, in general, girls who training. And uh, it's very complicated because our mentality is still like very traditional. Uh, all people are saying that like, I don't like when women fighting, I don't want to watch it. And uh, a lot of people watching and they, when, when you meet this person, they're like very kind and saying good things. But like, you know, if you read like comments on the internet, everyone trying to show, no, it's not for girl. Like, I, I don't want that like my daughter doing this thing or like my wife. Even, I don't know why, but even like when fighters, they marry girl who fighting, but they keep speaking that it's bad and think that they become like in love with this girl, but in general, like it's bad. But uh, when I was training, I was understand that it's, uh, I don't need only compete in Russia. I was watching that it's like how popular it's like, let's say in America. And uh, it, it was kind of like my plan to go here and fight here and uh, here it's so different, a lot of girls and it's uh, a lot of attention, especially like last years when uh, women start fighting in uh, UFC. It started to be so different, like doors open now for women. It seemed as though Kunitskaya's star was going to rise even higher when her exciting style caught the eye of strike force promoters in America. She was slated to face pound for pound queen Christiane Cyborg Justino for the Brazilian's featherweight title when visa issues interrupted her plans and forced her dreams to wait. The timing couldn't have been worse. Strikeforce went out of business, and as the eyes of the MMA scene shifted from Cyborg towards its newest superstar, Ronda Rousey, Yana Kunitskaya's trajectory slowed to a halt. A lack of resources for professional preparation, increased travel, and inconsistent training led to a series of injuries, and the seemingly inexhaustible motivation that propelled Kunitskaya thus far began to wane. Wanting a break and bending to Russian social pressures to start a family early in life, the resigned Kunitskaya became pregnant with the intention of walking away from MMA for good. I've been doing this for so long, I'm able to spot it. I believe it day one. I told them, the first, second week training, you can be a UFC champion one day if you want to. To quote the poet T.S. Eliot, in a minute, there is time for decisions and revisions, which a minute will reverse. For Raquel Paolui, a decision made in the space of that minute was a catalyst for her entire future. By August of 2014, her mounting personal and professional setbacks in MMA fostered a new sense of self-doubt, which became so overwhelming that it seemed like, quote, everything was falling apart. It messed with my head a lot, because it's like, man, I love this so much, and I keep getting close, and then it doesn't happen. 
maybe I'm just going to be the girl that everybody kind of just is the stepping stone. Like, you question yourself a lot. Like, I know what I'm capable of, but it doesn't stop you from thinking, like, what more do I have to do, you know? It was really just proving to myself, like, I am what I believe I am. Like, I didn't sacrifice my life and being away from my family and being away from everything that I'm comfortable with. Like, moving here with no job, no money, no car, no plan, like, by myself. So when I went in there that night, I was just like, I know what I am. I just have to, like, prove to myself that this is what I believe that I am, you know? So when I went in there, I was like, I'm finishing this fight. I'm not going to let it go to decision. And that was the result. Just as her father once built the family house brick by brick, Raquel needed each of these elements to work together to build herself as a fighter. The mental strength she found the day she was preparing to fight Pani Kianzad, to fight after being out of competition for so long, became the final brick. It was time to enjoy the process of becoming the Lionheart. She beat Pani Kianzad easily by first round choke. The steps that Raquel Paul Louis been through, the tough fights she had early on in her career, actually gave her the tenacity and the mental fortitude to keep going. Just from that, we know that she's conquered a lot of demons. And all I tell her is, listen, you've been through the nightmare. Now it's time to accomplish the dream. Raquel's move to Las Vegas also brought her personal happiness. Though they had only met casually in Drysdale's gym in 2015, when Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu champion Renato Canuto returned in 2016, they frequently found themselves drawn together, talking of their dreams and ambitions until dawn. Uh. What? Relax. I don't know what to say. <laughs> as soon as I got here, right in the beginning, I remember I would go train, and she was always there. So I would go morning and night every day for like 10 days, like I would go Sundays to do not miss a training because I want to be the one that was training the most. And she was there every day. Plus she was doing the striking part and I was there like tired, couldn't make it, but she was still in there. I was like, how, how, how does she can do it? He came here, we hung out a couple of times and then we ended up like, I ended up like bringing him to my house one night and we stayed up to like four o'clock in the morning just talking. And then I brought in, like, the next night again, same thing, like, four or five o'clock in the morning, just talking. And we bonded really fast because it was just, like, hours and hours of talking. We were like, man, this is the same person as me, you know? He wants the same things. He has the same drive. He has the same focus. Yeah, we ended up, like, you know, a week and a half later, he was pretty much living with me and never, never left, you know? Henato is, he's been the best thing that's ever happened to me. I truly believe in her. I mean, I know her husband is easy for me to say, but things are coming, like, becoming true right now. You guys are about to see what I'm talking about. Yes! Yes! I feel that Raquel, when she first came to me, she had all these scattered pieces, but they weren't together. I feel now we're doing that. That's what this fight represents. It's the celebration of our hard work and dedication. He's taking this championship. It's all come together, and like every fight, she's been improving. And I think the next Raquel, not only walk away with that belt, but it's going to be her best performance ever. For Raquel, a split-second decision to stay in Las Vegas changed the course of her entire future, bringing her a training partner and husband who fuels her ambition bringing her the coaches with vocabulary that finally rings true to her, who hone her skills as they quiet her mind. And at the heart of her journey is a desire, a desire to fulfill a promise to her father that she will do what she set out to do from the beginning, become world champion. Championship. Kuditskaya's return to MMA can be described as nothing short of triumphant heartbreak. Her previous winning credentials earned her a shot against reigning Invicta Bantamweight champion Tanya Evinger. Five, five and a round for the Invicta FC Bantamweight Championship. Are you ready? Are you ready? Let's fight! And when she finally stepped into the cage, Kuditskaya locked an armbar in the American after being taken down. 
Oh, and, and Tani is standing in the Ooh. face. Technically, don't I don't think it's illegal. I don't think it's illegal. I think it's legal. Stop, 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 stop. Wow. Yana Kuniskaya is the new NXT Bantamweight Champion. It was a shocking moment to see the dominant Avenger tap for the first time in six years, and the normally stoic and contained Russian's face lit up as she screamed in joy. It's not a foul. It wasn't a kick. But no, Yana she... Sky gets a tap nonetheless. My and the new Invicta FC Bantamweight Champion, Yana Foxy Kuniskaya. It was a short-lived celebration, however. Under an appeal from Avenger, the Missouri Athletic Commission reviewed the fight tape and deemed that the referee's mistaken call had interfered with Avenger's armbar defense. They overturned the fight to declare it a no contest. Yana Kunitskaya's claim to the title of third bantamweight champion in Invicta history was erased in the space of a moment. I still think that I, I won this fight and uh, this like very stupid decision. In the second fight, I didn't like my training, how it's going on. It's why after this fight we break up and now I'm training here. I still think that I'm better fighter than Tony and uh, I hope I will meet her again. <laughs>
Yana has the ability to pick her apart and eventually stop her, you know, third or fourth round in this fight. I think it'll be a first round submission. You know, sometimes they say, you know, three times is a charm, right? So like, hopefully we'll have another title in the house. I will win this fight by knockout. I will not let this belt go home to Yana. He's, he's fucking fast. Keep working. He's and the new Invicta FC Bellaway champion, Raquel Lionheart Paolui Canudo! It's going to happen. Believe that. On August 31st, one woman will have her hand raised, will have a belt strapped around her waist. She will not have a perfect record, and she will not have paparazzi blocked to her or millions of dollars in the bank or any new guaranteed ease of life. She will simply have this, that she is finally what she has always been meant to be, the champion. This is Invicta FC.